Hello everybody, my name is Sui, and today we'll be discussing about Madoka Magica, particularly 5 reasons why I love Madoka Magica. If you don't know already, I just finished reacting to Madoka Magica series not too long ago, so I think I'm pretty qualified to talk about Madoka Magica, especially the things I like about it. So if you want to see my reactions, please click up here or, you know, go to my channel, find the playlist, and you can go from there. Now that we got the intro out of the way, uh, let's uh, jump into the discussion. And also, before we go any further, uh, here's a spoiler warning. We're going to be discussing a lot about um, the things in Madoka Magica, and especially the things that uh, that's, that has already happened at the end. Here's a spoiler warning, you've been warned, so let's start. Number one, the story. Madoka Magica on the surface looks like another uh, Magical Girl fantasy adventure type of series. Uh, or so that's what I thought at first. At first I thought it was just another Sailor Moon knockoff or ripoff. But boy oh boy was I wrong about this, uh, this innocent looking show. This show is dark. Like really really dark. This, sh this show dwells into the dark side of, uh, of being a Magical Girl. And um... Uh, it goes from, it talks about the horrible consequences uh, brought by their wishes and to the dangers they face daily and even death. And I think we got our first death like on episode 3 or something like that. That, that was a fast death. And it was like a main character death too. So um, I, I still have to mention that these girls are still middle schoolers. And uh, they have to face uh, the dark side of society. Of like such as a uh, depression, uh, despair, and even suicide. Of um, and they even have to fight uh, against uh, witches, which are larger than houses and sometimes even larger than skyscrapers. And um, but it's all these unexpected dark twists that are presented that I find interesting in the show. And this show is uh, it's a, it's a dark, more realistic version of a magical girl story and it's a new take on the magical girl story um, of the traditional magical girls that I find really really interesting and uh, although I'm not going to discuss much about this but heck this story uh, uh, we are presented isn't even the original storyline as um, as a bonus uh, to this already awesome story it comes with time travel I mean, what more could you ask for? Number two, the art. Now, the art I mentioned does not include the normal animations uh, like these. In fact, I find these animation a bit subpar. I mean, look at this face shape. It's so unnatural. But what I love about this show isn't the, uh, the normal animations uh, that we are provided, but it's another form of animation when it comes to the witches and their labyrinths. The art shows, I mean, this art it consists of a uh, mixture of a collage and paper cut animation uh, that is uh, mixed with different types of colors. Uh, now at first, I was very much underappreciated. Uh, I very much underappreciate this uh this art and sometimes even found it confusing and a bit like frustrated now with a little research i've come to understand uh, how to appreciate this uh this work of art from the animators uh the art gives the audience a feel of surrealism this art of surrealism represents uh what you call it uh the unconscious mind and uh it, it which is perfect for the uh for the subconsciousness mind of the witches uh because they because this art style represents the witches and like no part of this animation this art is pointless because from the environment from the creatures uh found in the labyrinth uh, they all carry a meaning. Uh, they all represent like an untold story of how this particular witch came to be and how it actually fell into despair. And which is why I love the art because it it shows you like an untold side of the Matoka Magica story. Number three, 
the characters. Now, the main characters of this show revolves around five girls named uh, Homura, Ma Mami, Sayaka, Kyoko, and Madoka. Uh, they are the main magical girl crew that we are focusing on, and I really enjoy uh, these girls' uh, characters because uh, mainly because of their tragic and sad backstories. Now, what makes uh, these characters sad and tragic are their wishes that they make, which comes back and plays them. Well, we can start with Mommy. Mommy used her wish to survive a fatal car crash, which she later comes to regret uh, because she didn't end up saving her families too. And which, because of this regret, uh, she becomes a, a very, very lonely person. Kyoko is another character who used her wish uh, of, she used her wish uh, to make people listen to her father's teachings because nobody would listen. But later when her dad finds out, he ends up rejecting her, which leads him to alcoholism, which in turn leads him killing his whole family and himself, which, uh, but he only leads uh, Kyoko as the sole survivor. <coughs> now, uh, Saika uh, used her wish to heal her crush, Kiyosuke, but would later find herself being dumped uh, for her very best friend, the green-haired bitch. Uh, Madoka uh, has made plenty of wishes throughout the show, but one thing in common is that it, they're, they're all for the betterment of others. Uh, her last wish was to get rid of the witches. Of all of all times, uh, but because uh, she, she was the embodiment of selflessness, and uh, because she has to take, because she had to get rid of the, all the wishes of all times, she has to take in all the magical girl's sufferings and despair to herself, and she has to suffer alone, and nobody would even know about it. And uh, lastly, Homura. Homer, her wish was simply to save Madoka from her demise, from her suffering. And uh, Madoka dies or suffers uh, in order to save uh, other magical girls and Homura. But uh, after failing to save Madoka endless amount of times from time travels, uh, she develops this mentality that she has to save Madoka no matter what the consequences are. So, um, at the very end, in, a, in the movie, uh, she, um, how should I say this, she evolves into, like, the next version, the, the, she evolves from the version of a witch into a devil in order to save Madoka from her suffering. Uh, she becomes a devil, steals Madoka's godlike powers, and seals Madoka in, like, a false world where Madoka would never have to suffer. Number four, character theme, music. There are plenty of good shows out there, and when it comes to music, there are plenty of good shows out there. But Madoka, uh, it takes it to another level. Every character's uh, theme uh, pops to you, and you can remember the stories that goes along with the same, with the said character and theme. Uh, like um, each theme represents a character's background story very very well like for example you get uh homer's ominous music because of her uh mysterious uh background and uh Saika's bittersweet because of uh you know her story of how she got uh she used her wish in to save her crush but in the end she ends up getting uh rejected and dumped by him and Kyoko's uh, ultra sad depressing one which uh everyone finds super super sad because of her of course, her horrible, horrible, uh, tragic, uh, massacre of her family from her dad. And, um, although I'm not a musical guy, uh, but I can tell this song is, um, the, the scores and the arrangement, the music just makes it sound so right. Like, I know a good music when I hear one. Number five, foreshadowing. You know a show's good when you find more interesting things the more you rewatch a certain show. Madoka Magica does just that. It does not shy away from giving you a way, uh, it does not shy away from giving you, 
and you uh, like future plot lines and future events straight to your faces. It's mixed in so well that you that, that I, I think you'll only notice that when you go back and rewatch it later. Uh, this this fo th this foreshadowing it could be like visual it could be uh, it could be even be verbal heck I didn't even know about this foreshadowing thing um, until uh, the, the, this for there was this foreshadowing in the anime opening I didn't even know about it until I was just like almost done the whole show I probably wouldn't even know about it until somebody mentioned it to me so uh, yeah go ahead rewatch the opening to Madoka Magica and listen and read the lyrics, uh, you'll see that the lyrics literally tells you the whole story of Matoka Magica. And uh, as long as you just read the lyrics, and, like, you will literally uh, slowly understand, like, this this opening is literally telling you the whole story. And there you go, my five reasons why I love Madoka Magica. I really do hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, and, um, uh, if you would like a part two or similar videos like this, please leave a like. Uh, consider subscribing and follow me on Twitter and leave a comment if if you got any ideas. Uh, and as always, uh, thank you for your support and I'll see you guys next time in the next video. Bye.